Let's launch Krita and start by setting up a new canvas that is optimized for working with pixel art. I'll go to File New or choose New Image from the menu on the welcome page. Under Custom Document, I want to view the dimensions in pixels. To achieve a proper pixel art appearance, you'll need to choose dimensions that are very small so each pixel can be clearly seen. The most common resolutions or pixel dimensions for icons and sprites are 16, 24, 32, 48, and 64 pixels squared but you can make pixel art that is smaller or larger than that. A lower resolution will create a simpler image without much detail, while a higher resolution will create an image with more detail. As you can see in my examples, the lower pixel count images appear blockier with the pixels being more apparent. In the 16 by 16 pixel example, the wax on the candle and the outline have to be eliminated because there aren't enough pixels to capture those details. Each subject you draw will require a minimum resolution to capture all of the necessary detail. You may also want to avoid choosing a resolution that is too high. More pixels will yield a smoother result, but it also requires more work to construct an image. This 64 pixel grid version has much more detail on the melting wax, the curves are smoother, and I was able to add texture and shading by dithering the pixels. However, this was much more tedious to create than the 32 pixel version. Pixel art doesn't have to be made on a square canvas, but in many cases it should be. For example, if the game or application you are designing for requires square tiles. If you are designing for a specific application, then you will want to follow the image size guidelines. For this demonstration, I will use a square canvas that is 32 by 32 pixels. You'll enter that into the width and height. Since we are only using these graphics on screen, the resolution setting doesn't matter. When referring to pixel art, the resolution is just the canvas width and height. If you like, you can save blank canvases as templates set to specific resolutions. Saved templates can be found in the predefined menu. For the color settings, keep these at their defaults. We want RGB 8-bit, and for the profile, choose the sRGB default. This will ensure the colors in your images translate well to other devices. Now that I have the correct canvas settings, I will click on Create. Next, we will want to set up the workspace for working with pixel art. Let's open some essential panels. You can place these panels wherever you like. This workspace is available for download as part of my course. You can skip the setup and just install it to get everything matching what you see on my end. I'll briefly give you an overview of each panel. The artistic color selector is set to a grid mode with 9, 8, 6 for the settings. This will subdivide the color selector and limit the colors. This is optional, but it really helps keep your colors streamlined and consistent. If you want a wider range of divisions in the colors, you can choose the grid settings you prefer. For the color mode, I have chosen HSI, but you might also want to try HSV. This changes how you select the hue, saturation, and brightness of the colors. For an explanation of these modes, see my reference video on color selection. As you can see, I can easily change the hue and saturation of the color using the wheel. To change the brightness, I can use the strip on the left. If you prefer a standard color picker, you can also choose the wide gamut color selector instead. I've docked this next to the artistic selector. If you need to choose specific colors with RGB or hex values, then the specific color selector can come in handy. It's also very useful for making precise adjustments to colors. You can toggle between RGB and the other modes like HSI or HSV. Next, we'll look at the palette panel. This contains a library of swatches you can use to save colors to keep them consistent or to limit your color palette. You can choose different color sets from the Load a Palette menu in the bottom left of the panel. I've chosen Pixel Art 32. This has 32 pre-selected colors. If I were to strictly adhere to this set of colors, then that might help my pixel art to look more retro. I can, of course, swap these out for other colors, so this is just a starting point. You might even have a specific set of colors you have to work with. For example, if you're trying to match a retro console like the Super Nintendo, then you would only want to use 15 colors maximum per image, and only colors that console can reproduce. 
These days, there isn't as much of a restriction on color selection, so unless you are emulating a specific palette, feel free to use the full range of colors. The Layers panel is essential because it will allow you to separate your image into editable pieces. For example, you could use it to keep your colors separate so you can easily change them later. You might also want to use layers to create alternate versions of your artwork. And you can even create frames for simple animations using layers. If you want to learn more about how layers work in digital art, see my reference video. The Toolbox and Tool Options panels are important so that you can access the tools and properties for drawing and editing layers. Next, I'll add the Arrange panel so that we can easily align and distribute shapes. The Grid and Guides panel can be useful when you are sketching references for your pixel art. And finally, the Overview panel will allow you to see a small version of your pixel art at all times, even if you are zoomed in closely to your canvas. This will give you a better idea of how your pixel art will really look. You can resize the panel to make it larger or smaller. I'll make a quick outline of a flower shape so you can see how this panel works. It takes a second to update after you draw on the canvas. You can also use the slider at the bottom of this panel to quickly zoom the canvas in and out. You can even choose from specific zoom levels like 100%. One thing you will notice is that at 100%, the graphic looks very small. This is because I am using a high resolution display. Retro displays like CRT televisions and computer monitors used a much lower screen resolution. You can compensate for this by zooming in more closely or enlarging your image after you have completed it. We will come back to that. You could also lower the resolution of your display, but that may be disruptive to other applications you use on your computer. That does it for the panels we need to open. You can close any of the other panels unless you find them useful. Next, let's go to Settings Configure Krita. Under Display Canvas Decoration, you can change the color of the grid lines that subdivide the canvas. This makes it easier to see the pixels you are drawing. I keep mine set to white, but you may find another color works better for you. Under Start Showing, I set this to 1000% so that when I am zoomed in any lower than that, I no longer see the grid lines. Again, you can adjust this to your liking. Now that your workspace is set up, let's save it so that we don't have to do that again. Go to Window, Workspace, New Workspace, and choose a name. Now you can load this workspace at any time, and it will return to how you set it up. Now that the workspace is set up for making pixel art, we can get into creating our first image. In the previous section, I made a 32 by 32 pixel canvas to work on. This has a background layer that is filled with a light gray with a blank layer above it to draw on. The background can be any color, or it can be hidden if you want there to be transparency surrounding the artwork. I find a solid background is easier on the eyes than the checkered transparency grid, so I will keep it active. I use the paint bucket tool to fill the background. You may want to reset the properties of this tool just to make sure it is working the same as mine. I'll lock the background layer so we don't accidentally draw on it, then I'll select the blank layer. To make it easier to follow along, I have created a sketch you can copy. We will be creating a simple pixel art candle that should be fairly easy to illustrate, but also complex enough to cover all of the skills you will need to learn. I drew this sketch on a 1280 by 1280 pixel canvas. This is my 32 pixel canvas scaled up 4000% or enlarged 40x. You can use a calculator to get this value. This is important because if you have a basic formula to follow, then you can choose a brush size that will always be about a pixel wide when you scale it down. For this formula, a 40 pixel brush ends up being about as wide as a pixel on a 32 by 32 pixel canvas. If I scaled the 32 pixel canvas only 2000%, then I'd use a 20 pixel brush. Just match the enlargement scale to the brush size. The brush I'm using is Basic 1 found in the digital category. A simple brush like this, without size or opacity variation, works well for sketching. However, if you want to, you can sketch in pencils and then ink over it or use other brushes. If you want to be very precise, you can show the grid and use the panel to set it to the same size as your brush. In this case, it is 40 pixels. 
I also only want one subdivision. Now the grid will roughly match the pixel size and brush size. In this case, I don't need the grid, so I will just hide it. I started with a rectangle shape. You can add a vector layer for this if you feel like you might need to make a more complex shape, but just drawing this on a regular layer is fine for something basic. Next I created a paint layer and used the basic one brush to draw in more details like the flame, wick, and drips. The keyboard shortcut of E will allow you to quickly toggle to the erase mode. You will need to merge the vector layer with the paint layer to erase the vector lines. This is sort of sloppy looking, but there isn't any reason to make this sketch look like a finished drawing since I will be redrawing it in pixels anyways. I just want the general shape. Once the sketch was complete, I saved the image as a KRA file, but you can also use JPEG or PNG if you want to use it outside of Krita. To import the sketch onto my 32x32 32 32 pixel canvas, I will select the Reference Images tool, then click on the Add Reference Image button in the top left of the tool options. I'll select the KRA file I saved. Since the reference is much larger, I will need to use the Overview panel to zoom out to about 33.3%, then use the Reference Images tool to resize the image smaller to make it fit on the canvas. It should snap to fit the canvas as long as Snap to Image Bounds is enabled. The Keep Aspect Ratio setting in the Reference Images tool options will ensure the image does not get distorted when you scale it. After that, Zoom to fit view to make the view of the canvas larger again. Next, use the tool options to lower the opacity. This will make it easier to see both the reference and the pixels you are drawing. Now that you can see the pixel grid, try to resize and position the reference to match the lines in the sketch with the grid. By default, this reference image will be saved or embedded in the KRA file you were working on, but you can also choose to have it linked instead. I would recommend linking the file. This way you can make changes to the reference image file and have it update on the pixel canvas. Unfortunately, there isn't a quick way to refresh the reference image. You have to close and reopen the pixel canvas. Now you can see that the update I made to the reference sketch is now reflected in the linked reference on my pixel canvas. Now you're ready to start drawing pixels. On a blank paint layer, Use the pixel art brush found in the pixel art category to draw over your reference. Be sure the brush size is set to one pixel and choose black. Try to place the pixels right on top of the lines. Depending on the resolution of your grid, you might have to try some different positions for the pixels and see how it looks in your smaller overview preview. You won't be able to match the pixels exactly to your reference lines and that's okay. It is often necessary to be flexible and change the design a bit as you are placing the pixels. The reference is just a rough guide. You can use the shortcut of E to work back and forth between adding and erasing pixels. Once you are happy with the outlines, you can hide the reference either by making it 0% opaque or by using the option in the view menu. I will save my progress so far. Be sure to save often. Now we can start adding color. I'll name the layer with the line work outlines. Then I'll create a new paint layer beneath it and call it color. By keeping these layers separate, I can more easily edit the colors and I don't have to worry about messing up my lines. On the color layer, I will select the paint bucket tool and reset the options. Under reference, I will choose the second option to fill using the merged layers. This will make the fill stop at the boundaries of the line art, but the color will be placed on a separate layer. I'll use the colors in my palette panel just as an example. You can choose other colors if you like. I'll make the flame orange and the candle red. We will of course need to add more color depth than this to help the candle look three-dimensional and more interesting. I'll use the pixel art brush to add some yellow to the flame. Next, I'll use pink to make the red wax look glossy and lumpy. I'll add that mainly on the edge where the wax is dripping and vertically along the candle to establish a light side. I will add some dark purple vertically along the opposite side of the candle to create a shadow side. I can also use it to make the drips look like they are overlapping the candle. 
You can hold Ctrl to sample colors from the canvas, but I prefer to use Alt instead of Ctrl, so I have changed the shortcut. One thing that can help when you are choosing color is to view your canvas in grayscale. To do this, add a filter layer for Adjust HSV and reduce the saturation. Now you can show and hide this anytime you want to preview in grayscale. Make sure this layer stays above all the other layers so it affects them all. What I am looking for here is whether or not the purple is darker than the red. It is, so that works just fine. If the purple were lighter, then it wouldn't look like a shadow. I'll use Save As to save an iteration of my work. I can see the candle lacks contrast. I can try to improve that by adding more light and dark colors. I will disable the grayscale preview. The great thing about this art style is that it's very easy to change colors. If you aren't entirely sure what color you want something to be, you can always use a temporary one and change it later. Rather than this limited color palette, I will choose the exact colors I want. I'll sample the red color from the candle and use the artistic color selector to make it darker. Then I will use the paint bucket to change the shadow color to a dark red. Next I will sample the pink color and make the highlight wider. Then I will lighten the pink color and draw a line vertically down the center. Now the candle looks more cylindrical. Where the wax is dripping, I will add a couple of indications of some dents in the wax with dark red. I'll sample the orange from the flame and use the specific color selector to shift the hue to a yellow orange and brighten it by increasing the saturation and value. Make sure it looks noticeably lighter and check it in grayscale to ensure it actually is. If not, shift the hue and brighten it more. Let's go to the background layer and fill it with a dark indigo color. After all, you can best see a candle in the dark. You'll need to unlock the background first. We don't have to use a background for this artwork, but I will come back to that later. Next, let's go to the outlines layer and enable lock alpha. This will ensure that we don't accidentally change the shape of the outlines. I'll sample the darkest orange and shift the hue toward red and make it darker. I'll paint over the outlines to make them orange where they are surrounding the flame. Check the values to ensure it is darker. Now this really looks like a flame. Adding color to your line work is known as a color hold. This is a great technique that can make your pixel art more interesting, show more contrast, and create more form. I'll make the rest of the candle lines a darker red. You can use the paint bucket for this. If it is set to have the fill extent fill regions of similar color, that will fill the black quickly. I'll use the pixel art brush to make the wick a medium orange from the flame. Now it looks like the flame is engulfing it. And with that, we have a finished candle in a pixel art style. I'll save my final copy of my work as an iteration in the KRA format. Then if I want to bring this into another application, I can save a copy as a PNG or other format. If you do not want the background to show, hide the background layer first. There is more that I can do to improve this candle, but if you want to learn more about that, you'll need to purchase the full version of this course from my website at aaronrutten.com. You'll learn how to optimize pixel art and discover a variety of techniques for drawing with pixels, including patterns and animation. You can find a link to this course in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out my other tutorials for Krita.